Hey everybody, it's Dana from the Running Drink Podcast at runningdrink.net. Welcome to the Easy 10K live stream. It is week four, day one. Guess what that means? It means we are more than halfway there. It's totally eight week eight week program, which would technically mean I guess we are right at the halfway mark. However, as we've talked about in the past, week seven is actually race week week eight to maintenance week. So actually we're past the halfway point. And you guys, if you've been doing this in playback, you've been doing great. And I'm just really proud that you're getting up, getting out, getting moving. That's what matters. So uh, we're going to be doing a nice and easy 30 minute run. Jessica has jumped in the chat um, tonight. So we're increasing our total time on the short run by three whole minutes, three whole minutes. Um, it was a 27 minute run last week. It's a 30 minute run this week. So that means we have increased it by uh, a little more than 10%, a 10% longer run, whopping three whole minutes. But we are still doing the same intervals, 15 second run, 45 second walk on the intervals with a three minute warm up, three minute cool down, book ending the run. So let's get out there and get started. Of course, guys, Rhonda Lee, hello. Um, I do apologize for the tardiness of starting. We had some very uh, sketchy looking clouds in the area and the lightning indicator. And uh, they're still off in the distance, but the lightning indicator uh, has stopped and it should be safe for us. So uh, should be good to go. I am, of course, joined by my lovely assistant here who uh, is going to be doing her own interval tonight. I was sharing to our group. Oh, so she's doing her, she's doing her own thing tonight, not doing the fifteen forty five with me. Uh, so maybe, Jessica and Rhonda Lee, it's good to see you. So sorry maybe, about the coffee chats. Just maybe she'll be in the chat at some point I on know. her yeah. on your run. Yeah. So uh, anyway, let's get moving with tonight's run. I've got everything programmed into the trusty Garmin here. The trusty Garmin. Yes. Mm -hmm. And my only problem is that I get spoiled on the other, on the Apple Watch. And then when it comes time for the Garmin, I completely mess up like how to navigate this, uh, this user interface. But uh, here we go, got it. So we're gonna get moving. Let's do this. We're on off for a three minute warm up. So get moving. All right, Amy, you're doing your thing? All right, yeah. We're both doing laps on the street, so at some point we'll be passing one another, I'm sure. Exactly, uh, Jessica. Amy's been, uh, we actually sat down and we're working out uh, some of the scheduling still. We're gonna be moving a couple of things here and there. Uh, we are still releasing uh, new podcast episodes on Tuesday. That's not changing. Um, it is changing the hour of the day sometimes as to when exactly we're going to do the release. Uh, but new episodes going to go up in the feed a little bit later this evening, and we are going to probably move the um, the beer chat, or what has been the jokingly referred to as the water chat, uh, in recent weeks, uh, to Thursdays instead of Tuesdays. Part of that was, well, Thursdays close to Friday, which is almost the start of the weekend, and. You know, some people who might want to enjoy a cold one may not want to do so, you know, that early in the week. So we get it, you know. We want to give you guys what it is you want. That's the main thing. Oh, Jessica had the pumpkin habanero. Uh, that is a beer that is being brewed by a local brewery over in Fort Myers. We've had them on the show before. That's Coastal Days Brewing. They are friends of the show. And how was it, Jessica? Do tell. Oh, only one is a treat, but OMG, dark. The depth was amazing and a little bite at the end. I love it. I like when a pepper beer has a little bit of a hint, but doesn't blow your doors off. Um, I did have a ghost pepper beer once that was in it purely for effect, not for flavor. So it tasted like a crayon 
and then it punched you in the in the mouth with heat was not very tasty so i'm glad that they executed well on that one and pumpkin beers for me i mean seasonally this time of year there are a handful that i really like but they can be a mixed bag they are very inconsistent from brewery to brewery yeah Rhonda, uh coastal days brewing in fort myers they do some interesting beers and alex tapko their head brewer there is a bit of a mad scientist and he does amazing work we're big fans and we're about to start our first run interval here we go and i'm passing amy hello amy hello lady <laughs> Oh, you know what I just realized? <laughs> I started running during my walk, first walk interval. I got to remember that my first interval, because I set these up as uh, I'm not used to doing the three minute warm up and cool down. <laughs> and uh, when I tack on the cool down and the warm up, I forget that the first interval that I do is the walk interval. And I do that on purpose because Jeff Galloway really emphasizes the need for you to do your interval work from the very beginning, not just after you've smoked yourself through overexertion. A local jalapeno beer. Ooh. Now, there is a beer that I got introduced to at Epcot, at the Food and Wine Festival, called Billy's Chili's. They no longer have it there. I've braised pork butt in that beer, and it's phenomenal, making uh, basically pork carnitas with a pepper beer uh, liquid for the braising and absolutely fantastic great depth tiny bit of heat <sighs> Whew, this is really the first big movement i've had a chance to do today i had a lot of office work so yeah okay here clouds don't look so bad and then they're they're clearing out which is good. The weird thing about Florida and where we live in particular is on this side of the street, I can have blue skies and sun. And over here, it can be black as night. And it's gonna be just a matter of minutes before the apocalypse is upon you. So you gotta be careful about that. And here we go. Tons of bunnies out here today. Lots of stuff going on on the street today. We've had uh, vendors, construction, um, lawn crews, tons of wildlife. It was very weird coming home earlier today and seeing all the stuff happening on our normally very quiet residential street. I meant to say I thought it was going to be a light ale, but was so happy it wasn't. I really want to get a growler of it and save it because end of October or end of November, I can have a beer. I just don't know if it's going to keep that long. That's a long time to do it. Amy is in the chat. Thank you, Amy, for helping. This was just not her favorite interval to do. So I was directed or told she shall not be doing 1545s tonight. And Trip is in the house. Hello, Trip. If you are joining in, 
trip or any, anybody else, if you're running, please let me know what your interval is, what you're doing, where you're at, what you're running. <sighs> this is, I, I, I say that this is like the first activity for the day. I actually got up and did two miles first thing this morning. But uh, then I kind of killed that with hours of sitting at a desk. And I am one of those people, I hate sitting at the desk. Sometimes you can't avoid it. But I've tried the standing desk thing. It just doesn't work for me. And I know the science says you should absolutely do it. Gets the blood flowing, prevents the potential for blood clots, I think even varicose veins. But it's just, just, I don't know. Typing, focusing, for me, that's a tough one. Jojo, hello. Hey, lady. I'm glad you're able to come in. Hit a certain spot in the road, and it's Fog City. Yet on the other side, sunny. Yeah, it's weird, but we get it here pretty frequently. I mean, Florida's just a strange state. <sighs> Loving this. It is. It's not as dry as it has been, but it's drier been a lot of days that you guys have been coming along with me so I'll take it all right Jess you go get your workout in good job keep it up <sighs> living vicariously through you as you eat nachos I think I am living vicariously through you is what you mean Hi. I love it. Nachos might be one of my favorite food groups. Oh, and Trip, you're doing 1545. Awesome. Here we go. Probably should have picked a different color shirt blending into the background like that. The uh, other thing that's nice is that over the last week, well, since Saturday, I've been hammering away on the new phone. So signing back into apps, testing things, this seems to be working very well. Hopefully the audio and video is looking good for everybody. I mean, I can't do anything about the subject, but I can at least make sure it's in focus. <laughs> and of good resolution. Oh, I'm just glad you could pop in, Cheryl. Thank you. Enjoy your nachos. Oh wait, nachos, JoJo's having nachos, my mistake. Cheryl, I'm just glad you could pop in. Whew. It's a flurry of activity here in the neighborhood. I could go for some good nachos. Now that you say that, get some vegan chips, get some vegan crumbles and I have discovered a store made or a store store bought pre-made vegan queso that they make out of cashews that is remarkably very good and it even heats up well I already do the vegan crumbles for ground beef, so that would actually work out really nicely. I'll have to put that on the shopping list for this week. Yes, Amy's corrected me, sorry. 
nachos or Jojo. I, I caught myself. <laughs> Not enough oxygen. Hey, how are you? People are getting home from work. Katie Blomberg. Hello, lady. How are you? Hopefully you're off work. Uh-oh, I missed an interval. That's okay, I ran an extra interval. Oh no, wait, I didn't miss an interval. I thought I missed an interval. This is what happens when you multitask. They say human beings are not good at multitasking. I agree. At least this human being's not. <sighs> I'm always hungry after these runs or beer chats. Yes. That's the idea. <laughs> Us two. We're going to have uh, a little, probably do our dinner before we uh, finish up and get everything uploaded for this week's episode. But I had a little bite of soup when I first got home waiting for the clouds to pass because I was starving. Absolutely starving today. And I try to always keep at least some hummus or soup, something in the fridge. And I made some white bean soup with kale and uh, that vegan sausage. So very spicy, very hearty, but uh, I don't normally do like super spicy food before runs. <laughs> I don't wanna have to visit one of those so you know you know how it is runners y'all feel me yeah we make ourselves hungry and thirsty too oh stomach flu uh katie i'm sorry to hear that hopefully you stayed out of work and were able to just get some rest have some tasty saltines and maybe something fizzy like ginger ale. I don't know if those do anything. I mean, it's like a wives tale or a conventional wisdom, but uh, without fail, if one of us gets stomach flu or, you know, upset stomach, those items are getting bought and that's all that's getting eaten that day. Typically, Amy is also big on plain mashed potatoes. I'm giving away our secrets. <laughs> there she is. Doctors do it for three days. I think any more, that's kind of the minimum doctors are doing. They are erring on the side of caution. And you should too. Don't feel guilty and don't feel bad. You know, I think the days of being the martyr who shows up to work in spite of the fact you're sick is not something anymore that's socially hailed as the right way to do it. You know, it's the you're not elevated and look at what they've done for the workplace. No, they look at you like you're patient zero now. So stay home. I would say watch some Bob Barker, but he's not on TV anymore. So Drew Carey, Price is Right, Young and the Restless. <laughs> and have some saltines. That's the way to do it. Oh, well that's good, Katie. I am glad to hear. Uh-oh, Amy's dropping some old school game shows, Card Sharks. I was the Joker's Wild, Tic-Tac-Doe fan. I did have to laugh, I guess, recently. And I don't know if it's still on. They brought back the Joker's Wild. And of all people hosting it, Snoop Dogg. I mean, come on. 
<laughs> Been watching movies and sleeping. Good call. Very good call. <sighs> And Rhonda Lee's another vote for card sharks. Nothing wrong with that. I only say Young and the Restless because that was what my mom watched when I was growing up as a kid. Therefore, it was what I watched growing up as a kid. Nice and easy transitions. Remember, everybody, as you're doing this, you want to make sure that those steps are nice and small. You're not reaching with your heel, trying to pull yourself forward. You don't want to strain the outside of your knee. You certainly don't want to hurt that meniscus. Nice short steps, short stride, quick turnover, and uh, you know, keeping your posture upright instead of leaning forward trying to make gravity pull you forward. That's not what we're doing. That is frowned upon, especially if you, you know, trip on something and gravity takes over. You know, you'll find out real quick that uh, even if you tuck and roll, you may end up bleeding. So that's no good. If you can avoid that, you should. Our neighbors here in this house, they're relatively new. They picked up a McLaren and I'm like, I see you driving down the road the other day. And I said, it's so choice. If you have the means, I highly recommend it. A little Ferris Bueller's day off there. And again, I have to remember that everybody on different platforms is uh, not able to see each other's comments. So sorry about that. Multitasking, again, we've established I can't do that. <sighs> it would appear new neighbors have got some TVs. Good for them. <sighs> All right. I'm starting to see more and more. We have uh, this house here. They have a, uh, a headstone. We're starting to see some Halloween decorations, but our neighborhood for Halloween kind of stinks. We don't have any kids in the neighborhood, really. Nobody comes here because we have big gated communities that have these massive Halloween celebrations and some neighborhoods that are kind of known as the ones to go to, including a couple of private homes that get done up as haunted houses for charity. And I could sit out here all night on Halloween, won't get a single kid absolutely nothing and i don't think that we've had a single trick-or-treater in 16 years that we've lived here yeah just pick up a mclaren no problem exactly exactly you know you pop in sign some paperwork and leave very quickly because the car can do that there will be a podcast episode tonight on Halloween Horror Nights in Universal Studios. We need to do that. Amy and I have not done that. And we love City Walk and Universal, but we just haven't gone. And I've heard that with the, you know, the Halloween Horror Nights, they've really kind of perfected, you know, the fast pass situation there and uh the houses are supposed to be incredible but uh we just haven't made it 
So. Hey, hey guys. Good, how are you? We have very great neighbors in this area, but not a lot of kids. Oh, Katie, you're not kidding. City Walk has great restaurants. We always have a blast going there. Um, it's been a while. So, Amy, if you're still in the chat, we need to do that. <sighs> okay, we have nine more segments to go. So we are two thirds of the way done. And again, like you guys have seen over the course of the last three weeks, this is now week four. The goal is not to kill yourself where you can't talk. Even though today we technically increased our total running time by 10%, 11%, uh, we're not increasing the rate. Next week we'll look at maybe changing up the interval but uh for right now this is should be nice and easy nothing crazy for you we're just increasing that total amount of time because ultimately for the 10k you know you're going to be out there for a little bit longer and i have a traffic jam situation here so i'm gonna let this car go by Go. And these neighbors are getting a paver deck installed in the backyard. Super excited to see that when it's done. Actually, that's a friend of ours who does coffee roasting. And he'll get to roasting coffee at the house. And he sells his coffee at farmer's markets. And you can smell it throughout the neighborhood. It is so cool. So we'll be out running and he's like, oh, Alex is roasting. And that's a nice pick me up. Even if you're not drinking it, just the smell of roasting coffee, pretty killer. All right, we are the last seven, the last seven segments of the run and that's it so good stuff left the dogs in ran them this morning so hopefully when we get in there it's not destroyed that's the goal get them tired so they can't help but be good boys and girls it usually works Oh, Katie, that's okay. We're just glad you can jump in at all. <sighs> Catching up to Amy here. Well, not really. I'm gonna intersect Amy and probably turn around when I intersect with her, hopefully for the cool down. We have six more segments. Whew. She's doing some kind of interval. I don't know what she's doing. Vivo Italian Kitchen and City Walk. We haven't been. If you've been, tell us how it is, Katie. I'd be curious. With the workouts that uh, Josh has me doing, I don't know how I'm even holding this gimbal some days. He is destroying my shoulders in a good way. But uh, man, can't lift much of anything. <sighs> Let's see. 
we got five more segments. Okay. Yeah, see a little more uh, decoration. We have ghosts in the trees here. It's happening. Florida's a little slow on the uptake with the decorations, especially if you don't have a lot of kids in the neighborhood. Oh, here we go. There we go. Now, we are last four segments. And then we'll do the cool down. It's kind of funny at Christmas, you actually get a lot more buy-in at Christmas. I think partly because even down here in Florida, it cools off. I won't go so far as to say it gets cold. It's pretty rare, pretty rare. But uh, we get a few days a year where it gets into the 30s and 40s Fahrenheit. Um, sorry, Rhonda Lee, I don't know. I, I can't do the conversion off the top of my head. I know it's like times nine divided by five plus 32. But uh, it's a, uh, hold on, I gotta pop up there. I had to clear that off my screen. Orlando informer.com the cowfish sushi burger bar hmm. interesting thinking of doing this interval on Sunday for Boston I don't think I'll be able to sustain a longer interval give it a shot and really I would love to hear what you think about it I like the one to three I think it's very approachable uh, if it's too much, you know, you could go 15. If you like the 15 second run, make it a 1560, do one to four. I have this weird symmetry thing. That's probably not the right word. Completionist, uh, neuroses. I'm willing to accept that too. I like the idea of my interval adding up to a minute but I don't always do that. It's just something I try to do, but give it a shot. I like the 15 second interval. It is just enough time to kind of get you up the road and hello. Oh, she's, she's typing in this, in the chats. So hi. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, I'm super excited to hear how that goes for you because I think it's a good interval. I say it like I discovered it, but at least it's good for me. But that's what I like about the Galloway program is it's so scalable. You can do intervals as short as just a few seconds, or you could do intervals measured in minutes or even hours if you're that kind of a runner. Personally, if I can run for multiple hours straight, I'm probably not doing intervals. <laughs> but it's a uh, it's nice that you could if you wanted to. Oh, Katie, you say that restaurant's really good, huh? All right. Oh. You want it in 60 or 90 second in increments. Yeah, I get it. I, I don't know what it is. It makes no logical sense. And I fully accept that. Like, I know it doesn't matter. It's about the ratio and your level of fatigue and staying ahead of that lactic acid buildup. So whatever that interval needs to be is what you should do. And I totally get it, but yeah, there's that nagging thing in my brain that wants it to be on a 60 second 
interval. So that's where I've been playing a lot over the last few years with different intervals. Um, and I'm even okay with like, a, like Amy does the 624. Like that's, that would be okay. Cause six and 24 is 30 seconds total. And then you do two of those in a minute. I'd be totally fine with that. Uh, and when she does 624, she's cooking. It's pretty incredible. Whew. So we're now in the three minute cool down, which is good to know. I think we are anyway. Let's see what this thing's gonna tell me. Yep, cool down. So walking segment into the cool down. We're now in the three minute cool down phase. So good stuff. I am, uh, yeah, I'm just really hoping that as you guys are either doing this in playback or who've been running along with us, maybe you haven't chimed in yet, please chime in. Let us know where you're running, what you're running, and who you are. You know, we'd love to know. Um, I think that the 10K distance for a lot of people, they look at that as the next step in their running training if they're wanting to work themselves up to work themselves, work themselves up to a half marathon. And it really is. It's my favorite race distance. I like it when you do a travel race because it's, you know, challenging enough to make you feel like you got a good workout in. It's short enough that it doesn't ruin your morning and you're not completely smoked for the rest of the day, uh, feeling like a truck hit you. And I don't know too many uh, runners that get too high. Hi get too dehydrated doing say a, a 10k distance it's a uh, it's just very approachable so you know i am incredibly encouraged that some people have reached out and they're like yeah i'm gonna give this a try because it's a it's the next you know set the next run and uh you know i'm just thrilled anyone's getting off the couch so you know the fact that they're not only getting off the couch but also taking that next step that's pretty cool and something to be proud of and that's the main thing to keep in mind you know I think that even though in a lot of areas of the world the country here in the U.S. you know some of the, the pandemic stuff has gotten better and that's great not in all areas people still need some positivity and it's a good time for it and Doing something like this is a great way to give yourself some of that positivity through accomplishment and through doing something that is good for you. You know, even if you are not going to be running a 10K race, that's great. Don't worry about it. Because remember, race day for us is going to be week seven, day four or day three, which is a Saturday. And what do we say about our Saturday races? or Saturday runs, you don't have to run them. It can be a total walk. So even if you are just wanting to work up to long walks in your neighborhood, come on, get out there. That's the important thing. And, you know, you'll feel better, get you some endorphins, get you some sun, vitamin D, fresh air, you know, all that good stuff that, uh, you know, can't hurt, right? Well, I mean, unless you're a vampire, in which case terminal vitamin D poisoning. <sighs> oh, that reminds me, Katie, if you're looking for Halloween movies, 30 Days of Night, where they actually talk about why vampires, and, and that reminded, I don't know what weird thing for it to remind me, they talk about why vampires uh, burn in the sunlight, and it's a reaction with uh, vitamin D. So, uh, interesting, but really good movie. Uh, will definitely make you not want to go visit Barrow, Alaska. Um, no offense to our friends up in Alaska, but, uh, yeah, they, they wouldn't want to, I wouldn't want to go visit there in the wintertime now after seeing that movie. So I'm grabbing some water here. And of course, Katie has seen it. She said, it's a really good movie. 
I don't know that I've ever named a movie where you're like, oh, I haven't seen that. Let me see. Rhonda Lee says, oops, sorry. That's a really flattering shot of my chin there. Got you through the lockdowns. Exactly. You know, and I know that not most areas aren't, at least here in the States, not locked down, locked down. But a lot of people are still cloistering away in homes and getting out and getting that exercise, fresh air, sunlight does wonders for mood and overall fitness, regardless of how fast you go. You know, and uh, like I said, I know a lot of people could use some positivity right now. <laughs> I watch a lot of movies. Yes, you do. <laughs> but that makes total sense. You watch a lot of movies. You do a movie podcast. Totally get it. Oh. So we're on the cool down, doing our thing. I'm probably doing a little extra cool down. Honestly, just because it, now that the sun's down, the clouds are moving away, we're starting to get a little more of the, uh, of the um, humidity moving out of the air here. It's feeling really nice. So just kind of keep it moving a little bit. And then I may as well stay moving while Amy's out here because I'm not gonna go inside and have dinner without her. So yeah, anyway, so this week, Next run is going to be the same thing. Second verse, same as the first, like I said last time. Uh, the second run of the week tends to be the same thing as the first. So it'll be a 30 minute run, three minute warm up and cool down on the end. So we're gonna be out pounding the pavement for a total of 36 minutes on Thursday, weather permitting. Same thing, 1545. Long run this week is a little bit longer. So I believe that we are moving up to 4.4 miles on the long run. And again, like I mentioned a little bit ago, you don't have to run your intervals if you don't want to. We're going to incorporate some intervals in the second half of that run. So the first part of that morning is going to be a little, kind of a little walking coffee chat probably. And then for the second part of it, we'll be doing some interval work just to get everybody used to that idea. And have a, it's going to be a great way to start a Saturday. Great way. Hopefully the weather holds. I don't know what's going on right now. You know, this time of the year, we don't uh, get a whole lot of the afternoon thunderstorms here. It starts, starts drying out later in the month, early next month, but the, uh, the weather pattern normally calms down until we get a hurricane. Hurricane season goes till what? Uh, December 1st. So we don't usually get the storms that late in the season. Oh, Katie, you watched The Invisible Man. Which one? There were quite a few. Um, one that I would also recommend, although it's not The Invisible Man, is Dark Man. If you haven't seen that, that's a early Sam Raimi uh, movie as the director. Liam Neeson starring in that before he got to be a big name. And uh, I, I only thought about that one because there's a part in the movie where he's wrapped up looking kind of like the Invisible Man, but uh, definitely not the same kind of movie. It's a little more action, not really horror exactly. There's a little bit of a horror overtone to the character, but uh, a little more action, dark, super dark superhero, anti-hero type thing. Oh, the new one on HBO Max. I have not seen it. I will check it out if you say it's worth watching. <laughs> and Trip's agreeing with me on Dark Man. Yeah, that's a little old school. I finally found a movie Katie hasn't seen. Looky there. You're just saying that. You're just telling me that to make me feel better. And if you are, that's okay. I appreciate it. <laughs> but no, in all seriousness, you absolutely should check it out. It's uh, Sam, I mean, Sam Raimi has a certain signature to his movies. Uh, he has a certain style that 
I mean, you, it, it shows through in all of his films, I think. Uh, you could see his influence. Definitely, of course, Army of Darkness, Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, uh, Dark Man. You could really see it in... Um, what do you call it? Uh, Spider-Man. The original Spider-Man, Spider-Man 2. Those were Sam Raimi as well. And there were even some influences there with some of his camera style and a little bit of his humor. He sneaks a little bit of humor in there. And he was a producer on one of our absolute favorite uh, TV series, um, Spartacus. Not safe for work, not safe for kids. Highly recommend it, however. Um, just uh, for blood and violence and adult content, it's probably not something you wanna be babysitting your niece or nephew and say, hey, let's pop this in. You'll have some explaining to do if you do that. So anyway, I am hopeful that everybody can join me on Thursday for the run. We are going to be doing our beer chat Thursday. So it's basically going to be Dana's going to go run. <laughs> He's going to towel off, change shirts and join Amy probably for her chat already in progress. But uh, we're hoping that, you know, everybody likes it a little later in the week start instead of the earlier in the week start. And uh, it should be a good time because Amy's got homework on Wednesday nights. She has to watch city council meetings now. And she's going to do her homework like a good student. And I'm about to intersect with her. And then we're going to take it in and finish up and get our episode uploaded. So... Guys, do me a favor. Um, make sure that you've done your cool down and make sure that you check your podcatcher for the latest episode. Uh, later tonight, we'll get that uploaded and give that a listen. I'm pretty excited for what we're going to be talking about. I've actually got a plant based option to talk about tonight. You have what? A plant based option for food to talk about tonight. Yes. So I'm pretty excited about that. So, and it's one that people are going to love, even if they're not plant-based eaters, per se. So, check that out. Would you like some more? See what I did there? Now she's got the water bottle. Yep. So, anyway, thank you very much for coming along on the run tonight, guys. Great effort. We're done. We're going to do it all again on Thursday. Check out the new episode in the feed, runeatdrink.net. It'll be up there later tonight. If uh, that's too late for you, listen in the morning on your way into work. But it uh, should be a lot of fun. So we'll see you soon, and we'll see you Thursday night right back here. Bye. If I can stop the feed.